Hi, my name is Taylor Simone. And I'm Ryan Dunn. And this is the week of October 14th to the 19th, and you are watching Herndon News that you can use. How was your weekend? It was very enjoyable. Thank you, Taylor. It was a bit overcast due to rain. However, this weekend, Herndon hosted the homecoming parade. Despite the overcast weather, still a large number of people and residents of Herndon were able to attend the parade and cheer on a number of different participants, including community, local civic groups, and the Herndon High School Band. Neighbors, families, and friends lined Eldon Street and cheered on as the Herndon High School cheerleaders and class floats passed by. Civic organizations, performing groups, and more were part of the parade festivities. The parade route started on Sterling Road and ended at the reviewing stand, which was located on Lynn Street. Presiding over the parade were Mayor Lisa Merkel and members of the town council. Votes were judged on creativity and theme interpretation award. Recipients for the parade included Civic Group. First place was awarded by Herndon Optimist Youth Sports Performing Arts Group, where the award was given to the Herndon High School Step Team. School Group, which was awarded to the Drainsville Elementary School. Show Group which was won by the Jim Moyer Circus Club Class Floats, and which was won by the Herndon High Class of 2016. The Richard Downer Theme Award was won by the Herndon Class of 2015, and the Major Robert E. Church Award for Best in Parade was won by the Pride of Herndon, Herndon High School Marching Band. Videotaping the parade were volunteers with Herndon Community Television, HCTV, which is the PEG station based here in Herndon. Please check HCTV's schedule for the broadcast dates. On Wednesday, the girls JV field hockey will be playing Chantilly High School at 6.15 p.m. And then, the jun and then the varsity field hockey girls will be playing Chantilly High School at 7.30 p.m. And on Thursday at 5.45 p.m., the Freshman football team will be playing the Chantilly High School, and at 7.30 p.m., the Junior Varsity will be playing Chantilly High as well, the Junior Varsity football team. And then on Friday, it's the Varsity football team as they take on Chantilly High School at 7.30 p.m., and you don't want to miss that. So Town of Herndon is now conducting investigations in the matter of stormwater management the Town of Herndon is seeking public comment for a stormwater prevention and you do this, they're using public outreach and education. Stormwater is caused by rain or snow melt. In heavy storms, stormwater can cause flooding and drainage problems. Stormwater runoff is a leading source of water pollution and so the town seeks to change pollution causing behaviors through public education and outreach. The public education program is designed to provide general pollution prevention awareness about steps that can be taken to reduce stormwater pollution and hazards associated with illegal discharges and improper disposal of waste. Comments will be accepted until October 31st and should be sent to the email address publicworks at herndonva.gov. This is some water that you can play in. On October 17th, the Herndon Community Pool Center will be open and they're inviting you and your floats and your toys to play on Swampson from 6 p.m. until closing. Also, do you know a good neighbor? Because the Good Neighbor Awards are here. So please nominate a special person in Herndon who gives the extra miles to help their neighbors and makes noteworthy contributions to improve the quality of life within their neighborhood. Winners are recognized by the Mayor and Town Council and are presented with a commemorative plaque. The nomination deadline for the Good Neighbor Award is Friday, October 31st, 2014. Nomination forms are available at www.herndon-va.gov. Artspace Herndon at 750 Center Street is hosting the Expressions Portrait Exhibit, which will be on display throughout October and until November 2nd, 2014. Finalists in the 6th Annual Expressions Portrait Exhibit are featured in this show. 
Currently, the town of Herndon is celebrating Arts Week Herndon from October 11th to October 18th. Downtown Historic Herndon is hosting a week of high-quality, nationally known local artists for a series of free and low-cost events. On October 16th, there will be an art crawl at several downtown restaurants, including the Ice House Cafe, Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, and O'Sullivan's Irish Pub. Local artists will be on hand to show you their work, which may be available for sale, and to chat with you. There will be free appetizers and free parking. On October 17th, five clay artists will demonstrate their different sculpting techniques with live music by local bluegrass artist Jerry Irwin and, the, and serving also elegant refreshments. This event will be held at Potter's Fire, which is located on the corner of Center Street and Station Street. For more information, visit the webpage at www.herndonarts.org slash artsweek. The Herndon Regional Wind Ensemble will be holding rehearsals on October 21st at 7 p.m. at the Herndon Middle School. Dr. Lawrence will be conducting it, and he is very well known. Some of the wind ensemble instruments are the clarinet, the trombone, the saxophone, and many more. This is uh, to anybody and everybody who loves to play. No experience is, um, no audition is necessary. So if interested, please contact www.herndonrwe.com for more information. Yes. And do you play any instruments yourself, Taylor? Um, I play a little bit on the piano, but no wind instruments. No. What about you? No, I, I don't uh, play any wind instruments myself, but it seems like it should be a, an event that should be uh, any people who do have experience with instruments like that, something that they sh should take an opportunity to look over. Definitely. Yes. Other events that are going to be coming up, I understand, is going to be the Spooktacular. Yes, and get ready to have a spooky good time. The Herndon Parks and Recreation Center will be holding their Spooktacular on October 24th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Ages, you are invited to come if you are three to eight years old with your parent, and it, you will see a magic show. There will be activities and a goodie bag. The cost is $8 in advance and $11 at the door. Oh, sounds like it should be some fun time. A spooky good time. Indeed. Frying Pan Farm Park will also be hosting some upcoming events, including the Fall Carnival, which will be running from October 16th to Sunday, October 19th. The event features games, rides, and fair food. The Farm Harvest Days will be held at the park on Saturday, October 18th, Sunday, October 19th. Fall is a busy time on the farm, so you can visit and watch the cider press, shell corn, peel apples, meet farm animals, and see traditional farm demonstrations. Add in a wagon ride or a visit to the Fall Carnival for even more family fun. Some activities may have fees. Frying Pan Farm Park is located at 2709 West Ox Road in Herndon, Virginia. Well, Taylor, I think that wraps up today's show. In addition to what we've featured today, we are also able to have an interview with Yvonne Johnson, the park manager at Frying Pan Farm Park in Herndon. So we're going to be closing with that segment, that interview. We were very, very happy to be able to speak with her. But... Again, we want to thank you for, again for spending time to watch our program. My name is Ryan Dunn. And I am Taylor Simone, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Hello. We are here at the HCTV studios with our guest today, Yvonne Johnson, the director of Frying Pan Farm Park, which is located in Herndon, Virginia. Yvonne, we want to thank you so much for coming down to our studio and making time to speak with us today about the park. We understand that you've been working at the park over at Frying Pan for some time now. You've got a lot of experience in all the different aspects of helping make sure shows and other events operate over at the, the park. That's right, Ryan. I uh, started way back in 1989. I actually came to the park as a volunteer as I was home with little children and I needed some grown-up time. I uh, started as a volunteer so I could plant a vegetable garden there at the park. And over the years I was fortunate enough to be moved into part-time work there and then full-time work and 
I've recently been promoted to the park manager there at Frying Pan. It's a wonderful place to work. Yes, yes. The, the farm park is really a, like a jewel for people who are within the Herndon area. It has so many different qualities and, and things for people to see, including a, a number of farm animals that are, people can actually visit and, and look at. It's one of the last operational farms within Fairfax County and also has many other very uh, enjoyable events that are, are open to the public that people can visit. I understand that in October there's going to be a, some events including a har uh, farm harvest days as well as uh, carnival attractions that are going to be coming up very soon. I was hoping that we might be able to cover what some of those events might entail. That's right. We've got our big farm harvest day coming up. Um, it's actually a four-day event. It's two evenings during the week, Thursday and Friday night, with carnival rides running from 6 to 10. And then Saturday and Sunday, the event runs more all day. We have a lot of demonstrations um, we'll of cow milking and goat milking. Um, we'll have the farm equipment demos going on. You can peel your own apple. You know, definitely more harvest and farm kind of activities. But one of our most special treats for this weekend is that our really big three-story cider press that used to be located just over by George Mason University, we moved it to the park and we actually run it and press apples with it one time a year. And that's for this event for Farm Harvest Day. So on Saturday, we're going to be doing demonstrations and things from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And the carnival rides will be running from 11 o'clock in the morning until um, 10 o'clock at night. And then on Sunday, the demonstrations will be going on from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And the carnival will be running from noon until 7 p.m. And all the demonstrations, all the activities going on in the farm area are completely free. There's no charge for parking. You know, bring all your friends, bring your neighbors. We, we love throwing big parties for the whole community. Yes, yes. I know that so many kids and the families, they just really enjoy being able to take the opportunity to spend time together and, again, just look at the, the animals and just enjoy seeing all the, the young baby animals as well, whether it's the goats or also the, the sheep, and just being able to experience what it was like to be in a farm-like environment back so many in that sort of time period back before Herndon became part of the Dulles Corridor with so much IT-centric environment. That's right. Actually, Fairfax County, as late as the 1920s and 1930s, was the largest dairy producing county in the entire state of Virginia. And from 30s until the 50s, we were second largest to Loudoun County. So we really have a very rich agricultural history and uh, you know, the farmers were considered some of the best uh, high-tech farmers of their era. But uh, the kids love the farm and the families love the farm, but there's kind of a little secret about Frying Pan Park. Oh, please share it. You don't have to have children to come visit at Frying Pan. We have lots of fun things for grown-ups too, with or without their children. Uh, we do a wonderful bluegrass concert series that's on select Sunday evenings. Uh, you can come hear some music without paying any Ticketmaster fees. Um, we'll have dinner available to purchase and a beer or wine if you want to relax. Got lots of nature trails to hike on. We do dog classes. If you wanted to bring your dog for obedience training or agility, that's a really fun way to exercise. It's you and your dog playing on equipment for an hour outside so you both get exercise. There's yoga class, tai chi class, digital photography, quilting. There's all kinds of fun things to do, and we love the families that visit us, and we love the children that visit us, but we love the grown-ups that come without them, too. So we really think of ourselves as a park for the whole community and are looking forward to more and more visitors every year. Fantastic. Now, as I understand, as the year continues, besides the events that were being planned uh, upcoming the Farm uh, uh, Harvest Fest and Carnival, there's also going to be a few events in November and December as well. I understand one of the November events is going to be a retelling of the, the Thanksgiving story. That's right. That happens the, the Friday after Thanksgiving. Um, it happens inside the visitor center, so it is climate controlled, so you don't have to worry about it being too cold and being outside. 
Um, it's a great way to get the family and friends that have come to visit you, and you've all had maybe a little too much Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day, and you can get outside, get some exercise, walk around and see the farm, and then enjoy a nice warm space in our visitor center. Uh, Sue Knoyer does a wonderful retelling of the first Thanksgiving, and the children have opportunities to come up and play kind of different roles, different character roles as she goes through. And it's, the history that she knows about it is really very thorough, and every time I watch her, I learn her something. And my job title was historian for 10 years, and I still learn stuff from her. We've got a few more things coming up in October. We do have um, kind of a Halloween costume event in the evening. It's a Thursday evening, the 23rd. That's going to be from 6 to 8. That happens inside our indoor riding arena. And that's for the younger audience, the 3 to 8-year-olds, to come and kind of enjoy a casual evening of activities, which they can kind of take at their own pace. It includes a wagon ride, different kinds of games they can play, haunted barn. Um, and you can sign up for that on our website. The children who attend pay to attend, but the parents come in for free, and parents are required to come and stay with the kids. And then um, just before Thanksgiving, we do a massive horse show. It's our biggest horse show of the year. It's called the Pre-Turkey Quarter Horse Circuit. And of course, a quarter horse is a horse that can run a quarter of a mile faster than any other horse. That's how it gets its name. And we have riders come from as many as 10 different states come to compete in English classes and Western classes. And it's just a lot of fun to come and watch. And that's free to spectators.